Let's have a look at some examples from section 3.1. We'll begin with exercise 6. Uh, now exercise 6 says let R M N be the predicate if M is a factor of N squared then M is a factor of N with domain for both M and N being the set Z of integers. Part A says, explain why Rmn is false if m equals 25 and n equals 10. So what we need to do is look at what that predicate is again and verify that for those values that we have a false statement. And so if we fill in those values, it would say if 25 is a factor of 100, then 25 is a factor of 10. And 25 is a factor of 100, but not a factor of 10. So that makes that a false statement. Part B says give values different from those in part A for which R, M, N is false. So again, uh, remember for a conditional to be false, you need the hypothesis, the if part, to be true. And the conclusion, the then part, to be false. So we're looking for a pair of integers, m and n, such that m is a factor of n squared, but not a factor of n. And there are lots of possibilities. One possibility is m equals 9 and n equals 30, uh, 6, because 9 is a factor of 36, but not a factor of 6. Part C says, explain why Rmn is true if m equals 5 and n equals 10. Well, if m equals 5 and n equals 10, then the statement becomes, if 5 is a factor of 100, then 5 is a factor of 10. Now, 5 is a factor of both 100 and 10, so that makes that conditional statement true. Again, we can think back to how the truth table works for conditional statements of what it takes for a conditional statement to be true. All right, so for part D, it says give values different from those in part C for which RMN is true. All right, now you've got a lot of options here. You can do something like part C where, you know, M uh, is a factor of both N squared and N. But actually, we have another way of doing this. And I just, I took this route just because I wanted to remind you that conditional statements can be true in various different ways. Um, so if the hypothesis is false, then the conditional statement is automatically true. Um, so in other words, if the if part is false, then the conditional statement is true automatically. Um, so one answer is m equals 3 and n equals 4. In that case, 3 is neither a factor of 16 nor 4, but the conditional statement is true. Just again, going back to how the truth table works for conditional statements. Um, again, you're probably more inclined to give an answer similar to part C, which is absolutely fine. And I just wanted to do something a little different, just to remind you that, um, you know, a conditional statement being true doesn't mean that both halves have to be true. All right, let's look at exercise 15 from section 3.1. This says, rewrite the following statements informally in at least two different ways without using quantifiers or variables. Now that instruction of without using quantifiers or variables is really important. And what I've seen sometimes in the past is if I give a question like this on an exam, students will overlook that part of it, which is really, a, you know, a very important part of the instructions there. Because that's what makes this challenging is to try to write it without using any of that stuff. So the given quantified statement says 
for all rectangles x, x is a quadrilateral. So we want to rewrite this without using the universal quantifier that we see there, without using x. No variables, no quantifiers. And so the thing to think about is how do I kind of boil this down to its essence of what it's really saying? So one possibility is simply all rectangles are quadrilaterals. That's what it's telling us there. Um, or equivalently, we could say every rectangle is a quadrilateral. Okay, so that's the type of answer that they're looking for. They don't want any variables, no quantifiers, you know, just a, a nice, plain, informal statement um, that still captures the original meaning. That's also, of course, important. Part B says there exists a set A such that A has 16 subsets. Okay, again, we want an informal... Uh, a, an informal sentence that means the same thing um, and does not involve quantifiers or variables. So we could say there is a set with 16 subsets. We could say some set has 16 subsets. Okay, both of those are, are perfectly fine ways of, of capturing the same meaning without using variables, without using quantifiers. Okay. Exercise 23 is the last one I want to look at with you from this section. And this one, um, in some respects, goes in the opposite direction. We're going to start with informal statements, and they ask us to write it, uh, rewrite it formally in two different ways. Okay. One way we're going to use an if-then, and one way we're not. So they want both. All equilateral triangles are isosceles. Okay, so in the, that format that they've asked us to use, the first one, we could say for all triangles x, if x is equilateral, then x is isosceles. Okay, and keep in mind, we need to use the if-then, and we need the statement to have the same meaning as the original one. So we need to be somewhat careful about how we, how we do that. Um, but this, this is one way of doing that. For all triangles x, if x is equilateral, then x is isosceles. And I think, um, in my mind, that's probably the most natural way of, of doing, um, writing it in that format okay, that they asked for. Now, if we don't want the if-then, the way to handle that, or a, a good way to handle that, is to take that if part that of the statement that we used, our first part of the answer, and move that to kind of redefine what the domain is. So let me explain what I mean here by bringing that up. For all equilateral triangles, x, x is isosceles. So we're still finishing by saying x is isosceles, um, but instead of using the domain of triangles, now we're using the domain of equilateral triangles, and that way we avoid the need for the if-then. Okay. So this illustrates a point that's uh, discussed in that section, which is that, you know, you can have a statement that means the same thing um, and in one form is written as a universal conditional statement, and in the second way is just written as a universal statement, they mean exactly the same thing, but it's just the format um, is different. Part B says every computer science student needs to take data, stru <coughs> data structures. Excuse me. Um, so we're going to do the same thing here. And you're going to see, you know, a very similar way of 
adjusting from the first version to the second one. Um, so here for all students X, if X is a computer science student, then X needs to take data structures. Okay, that certainly has the same meaning as the given statement. And now if I don't want to use an if then, I could say for all computer science students X, X needs to take data structures. Okay, so again, we're kind of getting used to the fact that statements, and in this section, quantified statements, can be written in more than one way and have the same meaning. And in particular, they can be written formally or informally, um, depending on you know, uh, you know what we're looking for and maybe what the audience is. Um, I hope you found this video helpful. I'll see you in the next video.